Hey everyone, before we get started talking about the Coalition app, we wanted to let you know that you can calculate your chances of admission at a variety of different schools using our chancing engine. First, you'll start by completing your chancing profile with information that's reflected throughout the Coalition app, such as GPA, testing, and extracurricular activities. From there, you can use College Vine's hub tool to see your chances and information about different schools, such as cost, majors, and more. Visit the link in the description below to sign up and see your chances today. First things first, you have your personal information. So you're going to be required to enter in your data right now. Some of this data you would have already entered in when you first created your account. So like your coalition account ID is autom automatically generated, your legal first name and legal last name, your email and your date of birth, all of that's going to be pulled in from when you created that account, which we just saw a few minutes ago. Then obviously you have your legal middle name. If you don't know your legal middle name or if you sort of don't have one, you can definitely just click I don't have a legal middle name. It's completely up to you. Then you have preferred first name. If that's different than your legal first name. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that in general, if you've reached out to a college in some form, whether that's going in for an in-person visit before things got shut down, whether that's attending a virtual event or something like that, in any of those scenarios, right, you want to make sure that you put that name down here just so that the college can match all of the records together, right? The colleges are starting to use a lot of data in how they approach, uh, you know, student records and, and tracking students throughout the applications process. And one of the things you got to be careful about is any piece of information that you've given to colleges previously, you want to get credit for that interaction, right? All the colleges will give you at least some benefit from demonstrated interest other than maybe like the Ivies in the top 20 or 30 schools. So you want to make sure that you're sharing your, uh, you know, any different email addresses or phone numbers that you ever used to register, as well as any different names if you say used a nickname when you applied to, when you did something with the school earlier, right? So if your name is Zachary and you use the nickname Zach when you signed up for a campus visit, just make sure that you're taking care of that. Um, and entering that information in. Suffix is obviously up to you, uh, you know, f uh, second, third, fourth, fifth, et cetera, as well as junior and senior. Uh, I do find it a little bit entertaining that the coalition application only goes up to the sixth generation, whereas the common app goes into the 10th generation, which suggests that the common app has a few more folks with old family money using it, whereas the coalition is a little bit more modern and hip. It only goes to six generations of people with the same name. Then obviously you have your sex and here this is the sex that you were assigned at birth right and this is different than your gender identity right and you are required to enter this in and they actually have a free text response box where you can share your gender identity so if you identify something different than your uh you know sex assigned at birth if you, uh, or if you just identify in some way differently based on your gender this is where you can enter that information in Right, and this is again other names because that records might be under. So in addition to your preferred first name, right, any other names that you ever used to share records with the with the college or to interact with the college, right. Next question, obviously, is your U.S. Social Security number. You'll need to enter that obviously if you are a citizen, and it's really helpful with financial aid and tax benefits for colleges. So you definitely want to put that into your application. Then, of course, you have whether you are in the U.S. Armed Forces. For the majority of you, I'm going to guess it's probably a no, but there are definitely some of you out in the audience who are members of the U.S. Armed Forces. There's not really any disadvantage to putting in the Armed Forces and the fact that you're in the Armed Forces. There's really only an advantage. Okay, next question is, what is your current enrollment status? So the first is, you know, for most of you, right, you're going to be probably in high school or secondary school. And by the way, if you're in dual enrollment, this is still here. It's only if you already have your GED, you've graduated from high school, and you're now separately in a two-year college that you want to put two-year college. For most of you in dual enrollment programs with your high school and maybe, a, say, a local community college, you're still going to select high school, secondary, or secondary school, right? Next question is obviously, when are you going to graduate from high school? And then following up from that, when do you plan to begin your college studies? For most of you, that's going to be fall of 2021, so you'll just put that down there. Then the final question is, do you intend to apply for need-based financial aid? So when you're choosing to answer this question, it's really, really important that you think about which schools are on your list and kind of where you stand for them, right? So a lot of the elite schools have what's known as a need-blind admissions policy. And what that means is that the admissions office is not told whether or not a student will plan to apply for financial aid. What this means is that when the financial aid office, or sorry, when the admissions office is not told that, they make their admissions decision independent of whether or not you need extra money to attend the school. 
But there are a lot of schools which are what are known as need aware colleges. And need aware means that they actually can take your financial aid and your financial needs into account when they're choosing whether or not to accept you. So if you need more financial aid, you're going to end up maybe having a worse chance of admission at those schools. So if you plan to use the coalition app to apply to any schools that are need aware, and obviously if you need financial aid and you couldn't attend the school absolutely at all without it, then you, you can definitely select yes on this question. But if you're kind of in that borderline where you'd love to get financial aid, but you know you also want to get accepted to the school, you may want to be a little bit more thoughtful about answering this question. Because if you don't, if you say no, right, um, then you'll not flag as a student who's going to need substantial financial need, and it may increase your chance of admission at need-aware schools. Other thing to keep in mind is that uh, you're not necessarily blocked off one way or the other here. If you kind of change your mind later, you can still submit a FAFSA or even a CSS profile to these colleges, and you can still apply for financial aid later on. You can change your mind. This is kind of just an initial question that they're asking. All right. Now, uh, the next question here is the COVID-19 pandemic and the things that impacted you in the pandemic, right? So some of the cases that they're looking at, obviously, in the context of 2019, or sorry, COVID-19, rather, are first, unconsistent or unreliable access to the internet or a computer or a tablet or a laptop, a loss of job and, and no being no longer able to work, one parent or guardian losing their job and being unable to work, being considered an essential worker and thus being required to work, what one of your parents or guardians was considered an essential worker, a curfew that affected the hours you could travel, use electricity or access the internet, or you didn't have access to them, obviously, in your home. Your home responsibilities, such as child care or elder care, increased. Your health was personally affected. A member of your household's health was personally affected. None of these apply to you, or even an alternative situation. If you have an alternative situation, then you can enter that in here up to 300 words. Now, I do want you all to be careful out there, right? So this is obviously for material impacts that happened in your family's circumstances. So for example, right, um, another case that would, you know, fit into this additional information box is say that uh, you have a tough situation at home. Perhaps uh, one of your parents is abusive towards you or, uh, you know, your, your house is, creates mental health challenges you for, for you in some way or some form, right? That's something that can definitely be written about in this box. But what you don't want to do is you don't want to make this about one of, you know, you don't want to make this about either the pandemic was actually okay for me because I managed to overcome my challenges, nor do you want to make this about losing out on extracurricular opportunities, right? That This is not really the place for those elements because if you read kind of the, the, the question that's being asked here and the tone of the question, it's about those material impacts. You don't really want to come off as, you know, privileged and uh, tone deaf in your answer to this question. So I would only write here if you have a material impact that isn't really affected or described up here, right? If it's something like your extracurricular activities or something like, hey, I you know started out feeling negative, but then I worked it into a positive, that's, that doesn't belong here. Last question is, are you participating in a community-based organization? Um, and these are basically community-based organizations that uh, help out with the college admissions process, right? Free assistance. So for example, neighborhood organizations or church organizations, right? And so that's just a question as to whether you're participating in one of those organizations and getting help on the college admissions process. So that's the personal information there. Next up, we have contact information. And so here, again, they are asking for your home phone number, right? And there's not really a way to skip it, unfortunately, as well as your cell phone number. So if you only have cell phones in your household, or if you only use your cell phone, just put the cell phone in both times, right? Then you obviously have your mailing address. And again, here you want to be just be careful about, you know, choosing the mailing address that will apply when colleges are mailing to you. So if you're going to be moving, or if you're going to be, you know, splitting time between different houses, just make sure that you're putting down the correct place that you want your mail to be sent to. Right, permanent address is just your home address, same as your mailing address. Sometimes if you go to like a boarding school or something similar, you these might be different, but for the most part, these are usually gonna be the same, right? So that's the contact information, pretty basic as far as that section goes.